So our speaker today is uh, Rafael dos Santos, who finished master's study in Sao Paulo in Brazil. Then in December 2018, he came to CFT as a, to start his PhD. Officially, he is still a PhD student of uh, international PhD studies at IFPAN. Uh, but in fact, already he started a job. He moved academia to, for, for business, and he's now working in a ING. So, Rafael, the screen and the floor is. Okay. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Well, uh, this colloquium I have prepared have the title New Classical Correlations and Plant Theory. And uh, I'll describe the main ideas, mainly from a mathematical point of view of the, the subjects I have studied and developed with my PhD students. And uh, most I talk about the concepts of contextuality and uh, how this can be used for, for self testing. Uh, the script to prepare is this one, which is kind of big. Uh, it's flexible during the time. The pain of the flow of the presentation, many of the slides I will I skip. They are very technical. But uh, I present a short introduction and uh, I talk about probabilistic theories in the notion of. Classicality, and then I will show how quantum theory is a context of theory, how quantum theory is a no local theory, and uh, how these topics and the subject can be used for scientific quantum systems. Then, these three, uh, these three topics are about uh, the, the articles we work with. There is this uh, section about state independent quantum contextuality, but uh, I can skip probably depending on the flow of the presentation and then some final remarks about the whole presentation. Well, as introduction, I just want to, to talk about a very brief historical view and uh, how some things, some, main, some of the main uh, historical facts like early of 20th century, let's say old quantum theory, uh, appeared as a need to explain observations that could not be reconciled with the uh, classical physics, like in the black border edition. Mid of the 20s, uh, a modern theory formulated with a modern mathematical formula uh, form published. So, and there are all these three points I'd like to outline here. Like 1935, one paper from Einstein, Podolsky, and Brody. Uh, can quantum mechanical description of physical reality be considered complete? It was uh, well, it was this EPI paradox uh, proposed to Paul experiment in which they argued that this description of physical reality provided by quantum mechanics was incomplete. This problem was, let's say, uh, under discussion for the community for a long time. Only in 1964, let's say, they all proposed a reasonable explanation of what could be the elements of as described in the EPI paradox. And he proposed as a, a reasonable solution for this paradox, uh, a, a local variable, or a local heat. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 1968, there was maybe the first uh, article in the literature about the quantum contextuality, because the problem of hidden variables in quantum mechanics. They showed for the first time in the history, in the literature, uh, the concepts about contextuality. And uh, this first section, probably secures in the notion of classicality. Well, first thing to define, I'll start defining which is a, a contextuality scenario. Uh, compatibility, the first definition we need, uh, given a set of measurements, we suppose here a finite set of measurements. We say that are compatible, they can be performed jointly or sequentially without changing the statistics of the outcomes. And a context, for us, a context can be just a set of compatible measurements. And we can define a contextuality scenario by a tree of sets, sets of measurements that can be performed in a physical system, a set of outcomes for each measurement and a set of context. Given a context, expectation values can be calculated as follows. Just uh, uh, the outcomes of uh, each measurement, let's say, weighted by these probabilities provided by the theoretical description of the, of the, of the system. Uh, examples, just to clarify, a wave 
very simple way to to to, to talk about this contextuality scenarios. Uh, for example, is to describe the hypergraph of compatibility of the scenario. I give to you, let's say, a set of measurements I represent by vertices in this graph, and the hyper edge represents the context. So we have just two examples. In these cases, they are graphs because actually the contexts have only two measurements. So the hyper graph becomes a, a, a edge. And uh, just two examples, let's say the, the simplest ones, which has, let's say, uh, quantum realization, and uh, they have of course plus one and minus one, and they represent the CHSH scenario, the CBS scenario. Definition. What is a non contextual hidden variable model? It's, a, let's say, given a contextual scenario, we say that the distributions of probabilities admit a non contextual hidden variable model if, for every context, the probabilities for the respective outcomes can be written in this way, where we have a sum over lambda, where lambda belongs to a set of extra variables. And the probabilities in this set is are, are assigned to be deterministic. So the probabilities we have for the outcomes of our contextual of a scenario, if they can be written in this way, we say that they are a non-contextual hidden variable. This is the definition. It's and it describes in some sense a notion of classicality. Examples of non-contextuality inequalities here. Uh, if we assume that the probabilities uh, of uh, distribution of probabilities that you meet such representation, uh, we have constraints when population average values. For example, in this case, for the CHSCH inequality, you can take this expectation values for these measurements for, for the four contexts that you have. The maximum value here that can be attained by taking into account all the deterministic strategies are given by two. So if you assume that in this system, uh, there is a non context or hidden variable model that describes the probabilities which came out with this average values, the maximum bound here can be two. In the same way, for the another scenario, the KCBS scenario, the maximum that this expression can have over this restriction is three. So, and we say that this is the, the, the classical bound of the inequality. One to fear is a context of theory. Well, in this example, I think the, the, the PCBS scenario, we have this inequality. Now we have a quantum realization, let's say, given a uh, Hilbert space, a uh, pure state in the set of five projective measurements that respect the the computativity relations given by the hypergraph of contextuality. And the set of measurements and the quantum state, if you calculate the probabilities and find these average values here, you can have this about 3.94. So it violates the, the non context of inequality. And this is one example that shows explicitly that quantum theory is a context of theory. So just to make explicit this quantum realization, uh, this is a particular the, a particular quantum realization in a three-dimensional uh, Hilbert space. We have this state in this in, the, in this basis, and we can uh, describe the measurement operators to be this one, like this way. Two one-dimensional projector means identity, where these vectors are parameterized by these trigonometric functions. A uh, geometrical uh, view of this uh, that makes it simpler is this one. We have here, let's say, in this three dimensional space, three dimensional view space, this vector, which is the, the state and the set of vectors that describe the map, the measurements. Uh, v1 is perpendicular to V2, which is perpendicular to V3, which is perpendicular to V4, which is perpendicular to V1. And in this way, the compatibility relations of the KCBS scenario is satisfied. One, uh, I understand that there was there this KCBS scenario, which is represented by this graph. Uh -huh. Then this V is V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 are states. And uh, what is the relation between the scenario and the states? I missed the point. 
Well, between let's be back. We have here again, this, this this description here. If each vertex is a measurement, let's say and the measurement has two outcomes plus one before minus one. In quantum theory, you associate each measurement to a initial operator, which has eigenvalues plus one minus one. So if we have a, a, a operator, let's say now described in this way, this emission operator has eigenvalue plus one minus one. Take VI and uh, every orthogonal vector to VI is also Can I ask I the question? Yes. Uh, I'm I'm a bit uh, can you show this previous slide? With these beautiful graphs. This why 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 over this why all over the sudden some points of these graphs are labeled by different letter. What is the difference between A and B? Ah, these is are the systems are the system physical system. That's after all is a talk about physics. It is the measurement a zero uh, yeah. measurements of something which refers to the same physical system as B, or there are two different systems? Two different systems. This one. Well, this then one I don't system. understand it at all. If I have a two two radioactive nuclei, the one which is a beta radioactive, and the other which is the alpha radioactive, why to hell I should be interested in this thing? I mean, the physical process is going on in one nuclear before it decay and in the other are completely different. And both of them are, as, are uh, statistical events. And that was the notion of the quantum probability, which was introduced by Maria Skodowska Curie in, in, her, in her Nobel lecture, which was delivered by her husband. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't understand why do you compare these two graphs and this with this cryptic name CH, CH, and CS, CH, and key, well, whatever that means. And uh, they are clearly referred because on the one of them, you have a, just one physical system in which you measure the quantities A, and they have four values. And the other is the, uh, I mean, uh, there's something I don't understand in this presentation. Yeah, maybe you should uh, like converge to, to specific question because it's- like, Yeah, I ask the question. I understand that the question is, this is a good question that uh, in the first, in the CHSH scenario, we have two Hilbert spaces, A and B. And in the second scenario, there are also different number of spaces? No, not, not exactly. I mean, first of all, one thing not to make the people confused, it was a doubt I had in the beginning when I was studying these topics. I'm talking about the mathematical description of contextuality and non-locality. From the mathematical point of view, this is completely, let's say, disconnected with physics in some sense. This is a mathematical description, which is developed, which was developed, inspired by quantum physics. But here I'm just describing the mathematical structures. So at this point, we should just I don't know that we have these uh, different uh, operators from A naught to A4. And if they are uh, in the same context, uh, one can measure one after another without changing the statistics. So there's some constraint yes. on them. Yes, compatibility assumed. Yeah. And that's it, yes. Yeah. The yeah. compatibility and you think uh, what is in other words. Is this thing? No, 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 no. So compatible measurements context, can be in a single context. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. A context. But if they are not compatible, it means they would belong to different contexts. Each yeah. context okay. can have more operators. Not only. Yeah. Two. Is it find your context? Just say the compatible measure set of operators. Yeah. Yeah. B, no, no contexto, it means that the probabilities are described in this way. That's this, it. this way is uh, it's product of probabilities. Yeah. Okay. It's separate event. Right? Yes. Uh, here we assume that, say, if you calculate the probabilities in this way, we are in some sense saying that they are independent. 
but in this extra set of variables. This is but, one uh, of the main ideas. But uh, I, I'm terribly sorry, but Hilbert spaces define whether these systems are distinguishable or not. Are A and B distinguishable particles or whatever? Why should I have asked the question, what is the correlation of a beta decay in a one radioactive nuclei with the alpha particle decay in a completely different element from a Mendeleev table? I mean, there is something, I mean, I, I'm asking a simple physical question. I have a two nuclei. One is alpha radioactive, the other is a beta radioactive, and they are from far on the Bendeleev table. What is the mm -hmm. meaning of the correlation function A, B in that case? Why there should be any correlation between two physical processes? I can be back to this, this question or ask you when I talk about uh, uh, Bell locality. It's one of the next, uh, one of the next uh, slides. When I talk about the spatial okay, separated I, subsystems, I think it's classical and quantum correlation. Yeah. Mm. I propose that maybe indeed we wait. Remember, this question is yeah. still here. Mm -hmm. uh, to this next title. Yeah. This just, I, I stopped here just to, to, to talk about yeah, the example is... of a uh, quantum realization. And what interests me is that this realization that maximum violates the KCBS inequality is unique up to global neutralities that act in this three-dimensional and fluid space. This is one important fact that we will be back soon. And just here, this, I just show a pictorial representation of the sets of probabilities. Let's say if the, the probabilities are described by a non-local hidden variable model, we say that we have class in some sense. In the sets of probabilities, which are sets of, let's say, uh, high dimensional uh, vector space, and the sets are limited. The, it's this, this set is a polytope, and which is uh, contains that contains the quantum set, which is a convex set, and which is contained in a non stable set, which I can talk about this in the next slides also. But this is one of the pictorial representations of the sets of probabilities in this, in this, in this framework. Quantum theory is no local theory. And uh, here, maybe it's, I'll talk about, let's say, Bell, Bell scenarios. It's a Bell scenario. I'm just here representing a bipartite Bell scenario. This scenario comprises, let's say, state S, which is shared between two labs, spatially separated. I think in each lab, Alice and Bob can perform instantaneously with the dichotomic measurements AG and BG. E A and B G actually, respectively, where I and G become belongs to zero one, so each side has two measurements to, to perform. The outcomes are like plus one minus one. Now we can be back to the question saying maybe about this spatial separated subsystem when we have sorry, A, A is Alice and yeah. B. Yes, this is the Alice side on both sides. We have a shared system, they can perform instantaneously measurements in each side and collect the outcomes many times. And, and then we have the description of the probabilities as well. We can calculate the expectation values. So, uh, in this context, let's say non context of hidden variable model, it's a local hidden variable model. And uh, since there is this special special separation between these two systems, uh, we we can we can have a compatibility relation satisfied in some sense. And uh, we have here the non stability uh, non stability uh, condition. Let's say now it's the non signal condition. And uh, and this figure here just represents the light form of these events associated to this. Uh, local measurements of Alice and Bob in the system shared between them. One event doesn't belong to the light of the other. Let's say in this inertial referential show, both events are symptoms, and there is no way of classical communication between the parts and negative violation of causality as guaranteed by special relativity. This implies compatibility of the measurements. And in this case, 
let's say going back to the CH 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 scenario, we have let we have in the measurements now they become of Alice and Bob. This is why I said A and B in the beginning of the presentation. The classical bound remains the same too, but now we have a state, let's say this maximally intended state of two qubits and this set of local measurements, they attain the maximum bound for this CH association inequality, which, which is two to the square of two. So uh, if uh, this quantization given by the set is unique up to local unitaries and degrees of freedom in the dimension of the qubit space. And here, here we have, let's say, just a description of a maximum, as a quantum system that maximally violates this inequality, and it's unique of some assumptions. Now we can go to the certification of quantum systems. Fundamental problem. What's the maximum information about underlying quantum system that can be inferred from the statistics observed in a contextuality or non-locality experiment with the minimum as possible assumptions of the internal functioning of the device. The main idea here is that if you have a quantum system and you have the maximum violation of some specific inequalities, we have a unique group of quantitative measurements that attain this maximum bound. So if you perform an experiment, you collect the statistics and have the, the bounds attained, you, you can infer some information about the underlying quantum system. And this is the main idea behind self-testing. For example, suppose an unknown state, psi, and a set of measurements, AI, violate a given non contextuality inequality maximally, then this maximum quantum violation self tests the state psi tilde and the set of measurements if there exists a projection from the Hilbert space to CD and the unitary U acting on CD such that these two equations hold. This is a way. The mathematical, the formal definition of uh, self-testing, which is a way to certify the underlying the direct description of the underlying system. So with this, we can uh, uh, we can go to to some of the 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 main results from uh, our okay, what, what is P? P P is a projection. 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 Yes, it's operating. Let's say linear that acts from the human space, it's arbitrary fin finite dimension to CD. It's a matrix, heterogonal matrix that acts on H and goes to CD. And if it acts again in the same set, the same element that acts previously, it remains the same. If it's square, we have P squared what equals to P. And here, what we did, let's say now this 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 section, the sum of square of the compositions for a table of non-contextuality mm -hmm. Now I will show you some of the main ideas behind the techniques for, for self-testing. Given a, a, a non-contextuality inequality or male uh, uh, inequality, how let's say we certify that we have the maximum quantum bound and uh, in which conditions they 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 they, they happen in the quantum system. For example, now here you define which is a special measurement setup. Let's say I have a physical device and I can perform measurements without cost plus one minus one. And uh, uh, I'm using here let's say a non-demo machine measurement device, and we can let's say uh, Run this experiment time as we wish, we wish. The measurement device has n odd different settings, each of which yields plus one minus one as outcome. Right. If we want to test non classicality, for example, or non textuality uh, in this setup, we can define, let's say, a linear expression like this one, just a linear expression of this. Uh, the, the measurements performed in seconds here. We have a sequence defined. The order in this, uh, uh, this, this expression, it means the order that the measurements are performed. It's just a linear expression. You can, we have some freedom to choose this coefficient ci and di. And classically, the maximum bound is given by this expression. You just take the maximum 
among all the determinate strategies for the, for the inequality 